Hi, and welcome to our family Bible study number three, covering 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm John White, and I designed this little Bible study as a way for families and groups of friends to sit down and, and talk about Scripture and to have some discussion uh, about Scripture during this COVID-19 outbreak. Um, I hope that you guys find this useful and look forward to it each week. The idea behind this is that I will go through three scriptures. We're going to be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3 today, and there will be a discussion question slide. And I want you just to pause the video when you get to that slide and spend four or five minutes talking with your family about those discussion questions or talking about the verses that we've read. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, 2 Timothy chapter 3, continuing the letter that Paul wrote to young Timothy, who's in charge of the church at Ephesus. And this is during Paul's second imprisonment in Rome. So let's see what he has to say in chapter 3. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. So here we see Paul doing something that he, he does frequently throughout his letters to different churches and people, uh, making this sort of contrasting list. Uh, he sets up this chapter by talking about, well, what will people be like? What will people be like at the end of times? What will people be like uh, at their worst? And lays out this list of all these sins and things that people will do and the way that they will behave, the things that they will love, the things that they will turn to. And he does this to sort of set up how he wants Timothy to think and how he wants Timothy to feel uh, at, the, at the end of times and how he wants him to think as he's leading this church. And so he writes this to kind of set up that contrast point that's going to happen in just a second as we look at the second part of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. But I think as we read through this list, it's important to acknowledge that, you know, we can look at that list and say, you know what, one of those things, uh, or maybe even several of those things, are things that I have done things that I have struggled with throughout my life, throughout time, even before I became a follower of Christ or, or even after. These are all things that the people struggle with on a regular basis. But Paul's about to explain to us what is the difference, right? So let's take a look at the second part of 2 Timothy chapter 3. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worst, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So here, again, Paul is sort of setting up this contrast of, okay, this is what people will do. Now, what should you do? However, how should you live? And he lays out himself as an example. He said, you, you know what I've done. You know what I'm about as a believer in Christ. You know about my faith. You know about my persecutions and the life that I've lived. Follow in that example. And he gives us two very easy ways to sort of understand, am I following the right person? Am I, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Should I look up to this person in my life? Uh, are they doing what they need to do? And the first is kind of understanding that, hey, we have people in our lives that, that 
care about us, that from day one have been faithful followers, believers, people that have shown us since our birth that they are trustworthy, that they are people worth following. And Paul puts himself as an example. But I think that we all have someone in our lives who we know about, who sets a good example for us, who is someone who's always steered us in the right path. And so he kind of says, you can go back to that person. You can normally look to them and know that they're going to lead you in the right way. But another indicator and another thing that he points out is Scripture, the Holy Scriptures that we have known since birth. And if we're wondering, okay, well, am I on the right path? Am I doing what God wants me to do? A very easy way to understand that is to look at Scripture and see, am I doing the things that Scripture talks about? Am I living a life that is shown in Scripture, is something that is is reinforced by Scripture? And again, that's also something that helps us understand, well, should I follow this person? Or or is this person someone who uh, I should model my life after? Is it someone that I should trust to help guide me in my walk with Christ. Well, are they following scripture? Are they spending time in the word every day? Are they taking time to grow themselves in this scripture? And so scripture becomes a very pivotal and important part of understanding, well, what is my path? How do I know that I'm on the right path? I wanted to look at a chapter from 1 Timothy that also speaks to this idea of believers and unbelievers. But take a look at this. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2. So a letter written uh, to Timothy, again, as he works in Ephesus, but several years before 2 Timothy. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good. And pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. So here, Paul is telling Timothy, you know, the message of Christ and the the thing that Christ died for, the grace that we receive because of that, is something that's not just intended for a select group of people. It wasn't just intended for, you know, the believers or the people fortunate enough to know about that. That's one of the reasons that the gospel is so important as something to be shared, because it's meant for all people. Grace is meant for all people. And God's hope is that all people come to know Christ and all people choose to follow him. Unfortunately, one of the things that we tend to do as Christians sometimes is we start to get this us and them mentality. We start to say, well, because I'm a believer and because I have this message and because I've done all this, I'm somehow better than people who don't know Christ. And if you look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, that first part, like I said, if we look at that list of things that people do, odds are one of those things is going to resonate with us. One of those things is going to be something that maybe we've struggled with in the past or even struggle with now. And so what that tells us is not only is the the gospel for all people, but all people face and struggle with sin. And the beauty of grace is that even though we struggle and even though we wrestle with these things, God still loves us and he still wants all people to know him. And that creates this, this scenario where Our job is to go out and take that message of grace, to take that message of love to all people so that everyone can come to know him, so that everyone can come to be on that right path that Paul is telling Timothy he needs to be on. Well, I hope that you found this uh, beneficial. My challenge for you this week would be, as a family, every single day uh, for the next week, spend just five to ten minutes in God's Word, talking about a chapter of the Bible. Just take some time to dig into God's Word because Paul says, hey, you've got to know those scriptures. Those scriptures are God-breathed. They're beautiful. They're written by God. And they're so important for understanding what our path is going to be in life. So that's my challenge to you. Take 10 minutes every day as a family. Sit down and read a chapter or two of the Bible and see how that enriches your life. Thank you for joining us.